Hello again and welcome to another one of these Show Me tutorials. In this one we're going to be talking about the larynx. In particular we're just going to be showing anatomically where the larynx is so that you know and then it's, uh, it's innovation which is actually entirely from Vegas uh, but we can break that down into, into branches and help you remember it. So let's, uh, let's just work out exactly where the larynx is and I think often the confusion is between the pharynx and the larynx and we can draw a kind of simple diagram to kind of help us explain the relationships between some of these structures. So if we draw something that kind of represents a shape like this and this can represent the nasal cavity and if we like we can draw some of those uh, structures in there which are the conchi or the concha and the meatuses. so that's the nasal cavity. Now behind the nasal cavity we are going to have a structure which is going to be anatomically posterior. So this is going to be what we call the nasopharynx. I'm going to put NP in there. Below that we're going to have an oral cavity and the oral cavity is going to look something like this. That's where the tongue would be. And posterior to that we are going to have a structure which is going to be the oropharynx. So we can label that as well. And the oropharynx will continue on inferiorly as a kind of thin muscular tube which is going to become the larynx and obviously the larynx is where we're going to find the, uh, the vocal cords. And posterior to that we're going to find a structure which is going to be the laryngopharynx. Now the larynx continues on as the trachea and the laryngopharynx continues on as the esophagus and together that kind of resembles how we would expect to see things in the head in terms of the, the nasal cavities uh, and the, the oral cavity and the relationships between the larynx and pharynx. Obviously today we're interested in the larynx so we're interested in this structure in here and I'm not going to go into too much detail in its anatomy I'm actually going to cover the anatomy of it in a, in a separate show me tutorial but for now I'm just going to simplify it in basic schematic representations of drawings and uh, cover its innovation first of all which as I said was entirely from Vegas so let's uh, begin another drawing now, as you know, I'm pretty useless at drawing, so this will be pretty hideous, but uh, if you can get past that, um, I think we might be okay. So I'm going to draw it as kind of like a resembling a kind of block structure. I'm going to draw a big block here, and we're going to divide this up so we can actually have, at the top, we can have a thin section that represents the hyoid bone. So we can just put an H in there for hyoid. The bit at the bottom, we can have a chunk that's going to represent the thyroid cartilage that's going to be there and the bit in the middle is actually going to be part of a membrane called the thyrohyoid membrane and if we go down to the thyroid cartilage we can actually draw a section that's the below the level of the cartilage rings we can actually go into the territory of our smaller complete cartilage ring of the thyroid and we can label the cricoid cartilage and then below that we are going to have some cartilage rings which are part of the trachea there so we've got our, the basis of an anterior view of the main structures that make up the larynx so let's now pop on our vagus nerve and we can draw that as an X either side. And we're going to have the vagus nerve that's pretty much going to be going all the way down, shooting off down to the body to supply, to supply structures of the thorax and the abdomen, sometimes known as the wanderer because it wanders, as a cranial nerve I guess it wanders down the neck and doesn't hang around in the head, it goes down into the into the rest of the body for parasympathetic innovation. So how does the vagus then supply the the actual 
muscles of the larynx? Well, first of all, we are going to have a nerve that's going to come off, and let's use a green for this. This green colour coming off is going to be a nerve on each side. So the green in here is going to represent our superior laryngeal nerve. Let's put SLN in the corner for that. And the superior laryngeal nerve is essentially going to have two branches. It's going to continue directly as a branch that pierces through into the thyrohyoid membrane. And this blue one is known as the internal laryngeal nerve. There's going to be another one, which we can draw in this, uh, let's see what we've got left, we've got this yellow colour, which we can draw. And this yellow one is going to go all the way down somewhere in this region. And it's going to supply a muscle called the Cricothyroid, and the nerve branch that goes there is called the external laryngeal nerve. So we've got a superior laryngeal nerve that branches into an internal laryngeal nerve. Now I didn't mention what the function of that was. Its function is sensory above the vocal cords. So we've got a superior laryngeal nerve with an internal laryngeal nerve which is sensory above the cords and an external laryngeal nerve which is innervating one muscle and one muscle only and that is the cricothyroid muscle. Of course we've got another nerve which is actually going to be coming off down here on either side and it's the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So if we put red is actually vagus but also doubling up in this uh, particular tutorial mainly because I've run out of colours is, is going to be the recurrent laryngeal nerve and of course that has a slightly different anatomical relationship on each side so on the left side it's going to come down slightly further and we can just put the aorta in there because it hooks around the aorta while on the right side we can actually draw on the subclavian artery label that as SA and this nerve is going to come recur back up and run in something known as the tracheoesophageal groove and eventually run internal in here and the recurrent laryngeal nerve is going to innervate all of the muscles of the larynx except for cricothyroid obviously that's being innervated by the external laryngeal nerve and it's going to be sensory to everything below the cords so there you have it, you have your vagus nerve, you have your superior laryngeal nerve branching into internal and external branches and then you have your recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, which obviously hooks around blood vessels to come back up and supply uh, important structures. The, the vagus nerve itself of course will continue on as we previously described. So there you go and I shall see you all again soon.